We can make a funny face. Mm. All right. What? What? How much can you pull your face? Uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! You look ridiculous. <laughs> Do you think you'd like to see photos of other children in sparklets and rockets pulling their faces around as rocks as they can? If you are a child or family in sparklers and rockets and you want to send us a funny face, please do. The address is freedomkids at freedomchurch.uk. Good morning everybody and welcome to this week's Freedom Kids Friday. It's great to see you. It's also been great this week to see all the amazing photos of what you've been able to produce from a toilet roll tube. More of those later. Also some lovely dance-offs to the YouTube clips that we've been watching together. And we've also managed to grill a grown-up. So there's loads to see today. But that means we're going to do our first things first. So before everyone, everything else, we're going to thank Father God for something today. So have a little think. Last week we thanked Father God by using our praying finger to write or draw something on our hand and then we lifted it to show it to him. Today what we're going to do is use some praying arms, okay? So think about how you can use your arms and your hands to show Father God something that you are thankful for today. So I'm going to choose balloons because it's been Fraser's birthday. I love balloons, the way we can play with them in the house. So I'm going to be a balloon like this. So what could you use your arms for to show something to Father God that you're thankful for? Have a little practice now. Give grown-ups a turn too because it's important that we can all thank Father God. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make that shape. We're going to shout, thank you, Father God, together. And then we're going to wind up a really loud, amen, at the end. Okay, so you ready? After three, we're all going to do our shapes. So, three, two, one. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Right. Okay. So we've done our first things first. The next thing we need to talk about is the amazing toilet roll tube competition. We have been delighted and astounded by your creativity and your practicality. Um, so take a look at the results of your labours this week. Weren't they amazing? Yes, they were. And we are delighted to announce that the winner this week is Nathaniel. Good job, Nathaniel and his family. I think a glue gun was involved, which means there must have been some kind of adult help along the way somewhere. Well done, Team Lovell. Now, this week's competition is going to be possibly even funner than last week, partly because it's being introduced by the awesome Phil, he is a new member of the Rockets team and he's also daddy to Joel who's in Sparklers. So, take it away Phil! Hello, welcome to the workshop and if you're wondering who's that funny bloke, well I'm Phil and I'm new around here and it's great to see you all via the live link. Now if you're wondering who's next to me, this is Joel. Say hello Joel. Hello. And Joel, tell us a bit about yourself. What's your favourite thing ever? Fire engines. Oh, fire engines. And what's your favourite thing to eat, Joel? Sausages. Sausages. Now, there are a few other people that I think we ought to say hello to. So, let's say hello to the rest of the family with some TV magic. We're saying hello to Rachel and to Martha. Hi. Let's say hello, Martha. Say hi. Good girl. Martha's grumpy because she's got chicken pots. See you later, guys. Bye. Now today's Freedom Challenge is making an Easter garden. We were amazed to see the pictures of your toilet roll creations. They were 
absolutely fantastic. And some of you have got quite a few rolls kicking around, but we won't ask where you got those from. So today we're going to make an Easter garden and you'll need to start with something like a food tray or a cardboard box or anything you can find really. If you're stuck, you can actually use a kitchen plate, but make sure you ask your grown up first if that's okay and you'll need to give it a good wash afterwards. Right Joel, here's our tray. What do you think we ought to put in it? Everything that's on the table. Everything that's on the table. Well, let's take a look at some of those things that are on the table. We're going to start with some compost. You could use garden soil, but again, make sure it's clean and not put any nasty bits in. And of course, we're going to wash our hands when we're finished. So, George, do you want to scoop some compost into the pot there? Lovely. Fantastic. Pop it in. So we've got a lovely base of compost there. And we'll pat that down a bit. Now, what happened at Easter, Joel? Can you remember? Jesus came back to life. Jesus did come back to life, which means beforehand he had to die. And we remember at Easter that Jesus died on a cross. So we're going to make a cross. And what have we got here? Bread. We've got some little pieces of wood. We've got two sticks, which actually we've just gone out and found in our garden. You could go out and find all the things we're using today in your back garden, or perhaps when you take a walk with an adult, you can find a few bits and pieces that you find lying around and we're going to tie them together so that they make a cross shape using this piece of string. Now that our cross has been tied together, Joel, do you want to stick it into our garden? There it is. It's going to pop it in there. Oh, right in the middle. Do you think we ought to put a bit more soil around it so that it sticks up? Oh, wonderful. That's it. Pack a bit more in there and give it a squish down. Wonderful. There we go. So there we've got our cross. Now, you mentioned right at the beginning what happened at Easter on Easter Sunday. So after Jesus died on a cross, what happened three days later? He came back to he life. He came back to life because at Easter we remember that Jesus died on a cross to set us free and that three days later he came back to life so that we could have life with him forever. So where did they put Jesus when he died? Tomb. in a tomb and we're going to use a yogurt pot you could use a yogurt pot you could use a cup you could use a small box you could craft something out of anything you can find around but remember don't use something that your parents at home might be really upset if you use for part of your easter garden so ask first do you want to pop that onto the easter garden joel somewhere lovely right in front that's fantastic what a great thing to remember that the tomb is empty and i think we'll cover that with a bit of soil and then we need to close the door, don't we, Joel? Because there was, was there a door over the tomb? No. What, what was over the tomb, Joel? A stone. A stone. And shall we just pop it just to the side so that we can see into the tomb and we can see that it is empty? Joel's chosen this really, really big rock and you might be able to find a stone out and about. The last thing we need to add to our Easter gardens to make it look really wonderful and really joyful, because we remember this is a happy time of the year. Jesus is alive. And he's not just alive then, he's alive and forever. He's alive forever. And that makes us really excited and we hope that makes you really excited too. So we've been out into the garden and we did this together, didn't we, Joel? So we found plants that we know are safe for us to use. But when we get back inside, what are we going to do? Wash our hands. We're going to wash our hands with... Soap. Soap and water and make sure they're really, really clean. So we're going to decorate our garden now with this foliage. Do you want to stick your bits in, Joel? That's the bits in. Now, the next thing we'd like to put in are some pretty flowers. Again, make sure you ask permission before you pick any flowers. I don't want to upset it by cutting off your really lovely flowers in your garden. But again, we did this together. And there we have it, an Easter garden to remind us that Jesus died to set us free and that today he is alive together and all who trust and believe in him can have life with him forever and ever. Now, I hope you like our Easter garden, but we really want to see theirs too, don't we, Joel? Yeah, well, I do anyway. We really want to see your Easter garden. So could you take a picture of your Easter garden, perhaps with you stood next to it, and send it into Freedom Kids at freedomchurch.uk that's freedomkids at freedomchurch.uk 
ask your adults at home to help you take a picture and email it and Tracy and all the team would love to see your Easter garden creation. Happy Easter everybody! Happy Easter! That was wonderful. Thanks, Phil. Good job. Now, we're going to stand up, make some noise, because it's time for a song. This song's got lots of drumming and quite a lot of violining in it, so we're going to make a cook's orchestra. If you can go now and grab a saucepan or a saucepan lid and something to bash it with, then you can drum along. And if you want to also do a bit of air violin, to the song while you go along then you're welcome to do that if you want to take a video while you're worshipping and send it into us so that we can see how you do then the address to send it to is freedomkids at freedomchurch.uk okay click on the link and turn it up loud
Welcome back, everybody. How did you do with your air instruments? If you'd like to send us a photo or a video of you and your Cook's Orchestra, then we'd love to see it. Send it to freedomkids at freedomchurch.uk. Okay, it's story time, and today's story is from the life of Jesus. Now, like Elijah, who we looked at last Friday, Jesus also lived in a hot country and so probably needed to wear something on his head to protect it from the sun. This means you are going to need a tea towel and something to tie the tea towel on someone's head with. You're also going to need some black mascara or uh, black eyeliner so that you can draw on someone's face without it mattering too much. Another tie, four sheets of paper, two large kitchen spatulas, sellotape or blue tack, um, a green pen or pencil and a few coats or jumpers. So we're going to give you a couple of minutes to dash around and get all of those things. Right, how did you do with gathering your items? Managed to find everything? Don't worry if not, just join in as much as you'd like to, as much as you can. Right, so you're gonna need a pile of coats, just kept to one side, because we're gonna need them a little bit later on. If you can, you can draw some kind of palm leaf on a sheet of paper and attach it to a spatula to make a rudimentary palm branch okay we're going to need that later too and if you've got time to make a couple of them then so much the better and you're going to need your mascara on hand in a moment the tie and the tea towel and a couple more sheets of paper all right so i think it's about time we've got some helpers 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 where are you Right, we've got our team now, so let's get cracking. First thing we need to do is get Jesus dressed. So Jesus, come forward. You've got your tea towel down the front here. So you can put that on your head. That's it. Can you pick up the tie? Jesus, you're ready. That's wonderful. Stand to one side there for me. Wonderful. Now, we're going to start actually in an unexpected place. We're going to start properly with a donkey. Donkey, come forward. Yes, yeah, you're the donkey. You're the donkey. Now, what does every donkey need? What does every donkey have that we love to stroke when we say hello to donkeys? They have a lovely donkey nose, don't they? So, what a lovely, soft, dark donkey nose you have, little donkey. There, there we go. Fabulous improvement. And next, we need to try for some donkey ears. There you are. So that's just to help us because we're going to get some ears this way. If you just roll up a sheet of paper, roughly like this, and then push it in. There, perfect donkey ears. How are you feeling, donkey? You're looking incredible. You've got the donkey head bob. There you go. Can you give me a donkey? Hee -aw. Hee -aw. Wow! Can anyone at home? Who's the donkey at home? Can the donkey do a hee -aw. I'm doing one. You doing one? Jesus doesn't fancy doing one. Okay, so everybody meet this young donkey. This young donkey has been living very happily in a nice comfy stable until one day two men come to his stable and lead him away by his bridle and take him somewhere very unexpected they take him to meet the amazing man jesus now the donkey has heard a bit about jesus before the donkey has heard that jesus has been doing amazing things in all the towns round about he has been speaking and to and touching people who are poorly and as he's spoken to them and touched them he's made them well by asking father god to make them well he has spoken to a raging storm and made the storm be quiet 
He has thoroughly enjoyed being at lots of parties and he's done amazing things at these parties. He's turned water into wine. He's healed people whose legs and arms didn't work properly. He's told people that no matter who they are and what they've done, Father God loves them and wants to be in relationship with them. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus, you're amazing. So this donkey is led up to Jesus and the donkey's thinking, Ooh, this is very unexpected. I would expect that a huge and gorgeous racehorse perhaps would carry Jesus or even at least a large and rather fine pony. But no, it's the young donkey he's chosen to carry jo Jesus into um, uh, through the streets to the big city of Jerusalem. So guess what you're going to do now, donkey? <laughs> you're going to carry Jesus. Hello, Jesus. Off you go. Right, and you need to travel into shot. All right, so follow me. Now, as the donkey is led along, he's on the road to Jerusalem, and the crowds begin to fill the streets. They think Jesus is so special that they put their coats down on the streets so that the donkey that Jesus is riding doesn't even have to have his hooves to up the floor. You need another coat now. And all the time they're shouting, they go, Jesus, you're amazing. They're so excited that they grab palm branches from the trees and they start shouting and saying, Jesus, you're amazing. And they do this in a special way. They say in a special word called Hosanna. Who in your house can shout Hosanna the loudest? Hosanna. It's a very, very exciting scene and it goes on along the whole road. Are you right there, Jesus? Yeah, okay. You want another coat? Okay. All the way till they get to Jerusalem when Jesus carefully gets off the young donkey. Thanks the donkey for being so good at carrying him. And then the donkey is led off home. Well, Jesus goes into the city and while he goes into the city, all the children who've been running after him on the street run through the temple courts and through the city saying, Jesus is amazing. He's the king of kings. Incredible. I love that story. Now, one of the things that we need to figure out about this is Hosanna. What does Hosanna mean? Donkey, do you know what Hosanna means? No? Jesus, I think you probably know what Hosanna means. Come here, come here. It means, can you say that? He saves. he saves. People were saying to Jesus, he saves. He's the saviour. He's the one who can rescue us. And they were totally right. Jesus is the one who can rescue us. Now, we are going to find out a bit more about that after our next song. I've got a little bit of inspiration for you before you watch it though. Have a look at this quick video of the Adoma family dance off from last week. Okay, great. So now you know how to do it. Here comes a song with a lot of na 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 naing and also some uh, dance moves that will be shown to you so that you can copy them along if you'd like to. Go and enjoy singing and dancing to Jesus.
Welcome back everybody. How did you do with your dance moves? Did you get on with the na 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 or were you too busy doing all the hand actions? Well, I've got a question for you. Does anyone of you out there ever feel like a bit of a donkey? Well, I know I do. I feel a little bit like that young donkey from today's story that's found itself in a very unexpected situation. Do you know what? About a month ago, I had no idea that actually I wouldn't be taking Oliver to school on school days. And I was not expecting that when I went to the supermarket, there'd be no pasta and no baked beans. And Rosie certainly wasn't expecting that she wouldn't be able to go to the swimming pool anytime soon, which is what she asked for every day. So we find ourselves in really unexpected situations sometimes. But do you know what the good news is? The good news is that Jesus has promised us the gift of the Holy Spirit who can help us. His main jobs are to comfort us and to help us when things are unexpected, along with lots of other things that he does. One of those other things is that he helps us to pray. So we're going to ask him to help us pray in a moment and then we're going to see what happens. Are you ready? OK, so we're going to put our arms out a bit like this because when we talk to Father God very often he wants to give us something we are not just talking to him all the time he'd like to talk back or give us a present from him to us so we put our hands out ready to show that we are ready to catch whatever he has for us if you'd like to close your eyes to help you concentrate then that can be good too we could just close one if you want and we'll say Holy Spirit please help us to pray. Say thank you Jesus that you rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and then did all the other things that we're going to find out at Easter so that you could save us. Thank you that you're the God who saves us. Now open one eye. What I'd like you to do is think about one thing that you would like particular help with from Jesus today. Can you think of one thing? Maybe it was a game that you've been playing. Could be something food related, something in your family, your garden. One thing that you'd like very much to have his help with. Now, what you can do is take your hands and whisper to Father God all about those things now into your hands. Tell him all about it. Okay, now, so Father God's heard all of those things. Great, now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna see what he thinks about those things that we've asked for help with. So, put your hands out like this to catch anything that he might want to whisper back to you. Ready? Okay. And then put those things to your ear and wait. See if you can hear anything he might have given you to catch. And those things, you might not hear them, but you hear other things. You might hear them as a thought or an idea in your head. Or you might hear them as a feeling. Have a little listen. Okay. Father God, thank you that you sent your son Jesus to save us and that you promise that if we follow you, you'll fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we have your help and your comfort with us every day. Should we do a wind up, amen? You ready? Amen. Okay. Wonderful. Well, we've done so much together today. There's time just for one more thing, and that is grill a grown-up. So take a look at this video of us grilling a certain Joe. Ring, 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 ring. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Hi, my name's Joe Topley. What's your name? Benji Topley. Hey, I didn't hear that. Benji Topley. Benji Topley? Hi Benji Topley, what do you want to know? What do you like about church? 
what do I like about church? I like going and seeing my friends and being together with people who also love Jesus and having a great time worshipping together. And I like the coffee too. How about you? Quite a bit. Awesome. Thanks. Nice to chat. Bye. Bye. Hello, Jack. Hello. I've got a question for you. Yes. What's the best meal you've ever had? Oh, the best meal. Oh, I do like your microphone. It's very nice. The best meal I've ever had is fresh pasta with lovely truffle oil. Where did you have it? I had that. Hello, Ruffy. We. I had that in Italy. What? Who did you have it with? I had that with my lovely husband Mark, who plays the drums at church sometimes, and Joe and Paul Ibbert. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your questions. Goodbye. Goodbye. So, Jo told us all about her favourite meal. That links very nicely to next week when we, you and me, all of us will be eating a meal together as part of our Freedom Kids Friday. Okay, I'm going to send out some messages to your household about what you need to get prepared, ready for Friday so that we can all eat together and find out more about the story of Easter and how Jesus came to save us. But in the meantime, if you would like to send in any pictures or videos of you dancing, of you um, responding to our new competition for an Easter garden, any questions that you want to grill a grown up with or anything else that you'd like to send in, hopefully some incredible donkey pictures, please send them in to freedomkids at freedomchurch.uk. Looking forward to seeing and hearing from you. Bye-bye till then.